when I learned someone is a pro-choice activist, ardent, liberal, left-leaning, politically Guilty. driven, <laughs> I get a picture of what that means. I was completely shocked to find out that I even liked him. <laughs> I just didn't see that coming. People surprise you because they're never as simple as you want them to be. We need to choose a better way to be in conflict with each other. In 2014, Abigail Disney set out to make a documentary about gun violence, but she needed a conservative voice. I was deliberately reaching out and trying to find somebody who was as far from me on the political spectrum as I could possibly find, and I found him. <laughs> it is the taking of innocent, nascent human life and the exploitation of women in crisis for profit. I've been a pro-life activist for a long time. It's what brought me into the discussion on guns. Reverend Robert Schenck had already begun to question the conservative position on gun control, in part because of the 2013 D.C. Navy Yard shooting near his office, where 12 people were killed. To me, the pulpit is a place that delivers life and doesn't take life or nullify the value of human life. So for me, that was one of the reasons that it became imperative to take on the gun question. In the documentary, Shank spoke out for the first time, questioning how one can be both pro-life and pro-gun. His willingness to question his own conservative position inspired Disney. I realized I'd carried a lot of expectations into the first meeting that were wildly inaccurate. She was willing to take the risk of crossing over into my world. That was inspiring to me. Absolutely. They're now using their friendship to help others. Schenck formed the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute with Disney's help. The Institute doesn't push for specific policies. So. Instead, it encourages people in faith-based communities to question their long-held beliefs and have difficult conversations. We're both like Columbus. We, we crossed the ocean mm. expecting to find monsters on the other side, and it turned out there weren't any. Because defensive gun use implies matters of life and death, the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute has taken it on as a matter of supreme moral, ethical, and theological concern. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I didn't hear a lot of things I disagreed with anywhere in this. And I think we need to rescue this conversation from politics. Guns are like synecdoche. They contain, they reflect, and they drive everything that is difficult and problematic about American political life. So they're nearly impossible to talk about. Once you start talking, you retreat into your bunkers, and no one can seem to find a way to weave together a conversation that moves us anywhere but further apart. Shank and Disney are still far apart on many issues, like abortion. When I first met Rob and we started working together, I had it in my head that the ultimate thing would be to change his mind on abortion. But through her friendship with Shank, Disney says she saw that converting others to her way of thinking wasn't the only way to move forward. I'm not in charge of his mind, and he's not in charge of mine, and we need to stop that. We have to come out of our trenches, meet in the middle, and mingle, and know each other, and care about each other's humanity and families and the rest of it. From that place, you work things through. The question about guns is really just a starting point for a whole lot of other questions. It's just an example, really. It's a terribly important one. It's, it's life and death. 